We got documentation that shows how the stack all fits together here. Why don't I step through this in half a second? We have walkthroughs for using different pieces of the stack. So if you're thinking about uh, getting started with something, we got nice little walkthroughs for using hyper cores, hyper drives, or hyper Bs, and I'll explain in a moment what those are. We have this great workshop that Matthias and Andrew put together that actually steps through how all the data structures in Hyper works. And I found it to be surprisingly approachable. They really did a great job with it and uh, probably gonna be turning that into a talk for FOSDEM. So a great little workshop there. Got an FAQ for any kind of questions you got. So let's talk about the module stack here. This is a pretty good high level overview of what all is inside of the Hyper stack. The way to read this chart is you've got these two modules right here, HyperDrive and HyperB, and they live on top of the core stack, right? And then the core stack right here, you have hyperspace, which is the daemon, that, that's kind of batteries included, got everything handy for you. And then what hyperspace wraps are these three modules right here. So whenever you're getting started and you're trying to decide if you're gonna be using the hyperspace daemon or using the standalone modules, that's the decision you're, you're choosing between is whether or not you're gonna be using all of them put together nicely or the individual modules that the hyperspace wraps. So let's talk about each of these modules. Starting from the top, HyperDrive is a files archive, kind of like a Git repo almost, but it's you know peer to peer, exists on top of the stack. HyperB is a key value database, kind of like level DB, really similar to, to, to use. In fact, if you look at the API here, yeah, this should look super familiar. And then here's the, the HyperDrive API, which looks kind of like the Node.js FS uh, module. So we got HyperDrive and HyperB. Those are our top level data structures. Those are usually the things you're gonna be building off of. And then the, the lower level stuff, for the most part, is should be plumbing if you're kind of coming at it uh, at first. And you might wanna get into some of the pieces of plumbing at some point, but maybe not. HyperCore is an append-only log, and that is basically the core data structure upon which all other data structures are built, including HyperDrive and HyperB. So when you make a HyperDrive, it actually uses two HyperCores. Uh, when you make a HyperB, it uses one HyperCore. So HyperCore is just kind of the internal data set. And if you look at the API, it's just like this. You got one function, append, because it's append only. That's the only mutation function. And then you got a way to get individual values in the log. Core store is a utility for managing a lot of HyperCores on disk. So, you know, you got 10 different HyperCores. You could dump them all into your core store and save them conveniently. HyperSwarm is our connectivity layer. This is the thing that helps your devices find each other. And it is basically what the HyperBeam thing is built on, but of course, really everything inside of the HyperCore stack uses HyperSwarm. So you have some kind of a topic like my HyperSwarm D key, and you can announce yourself your IP address on it and other people can find your IP address. And HyperSwarm is actually pretty, pretty cool because not only does it help you find the IP addresses of who you're trying to connect to, but it includes a protocol for establishing the connection, which in a peer-to-peer -peer context is usually really difficult, something you call hole punching. As far as I know, it is the only DHT ever created which does hole punching for you. And usually you have to have some kind of service somewhere that helps do the hole punching. 